It's the 23rd of September 2024, and the Cumbrian coastline, closed for much of this month, is reopening today. The BBC weathermen are forecasting a great day for Eskdale, so an early start, up at 4.30am, and here I come. Arriving at Carlisle at 7.50, I spot some interesting stock in the sidings. My photo kit is all packed away, and my train for Ravenglass is due to leave shortly, so I grab my phone and take a couple of shots. And now an enjoyable 100-minute ride around the Cumbrian coast. Visibility not all I might have hoped for. It may improve as the day goes on. Now I join my old friend Sid Edwards for a ride up the valley to the Green, where Sid will be station master for the day. I'm planning to do some walking. Nothing desperately strenuous, but I do need the exercise. My walk starts with crossing the railway line at the narrow lane which is used by motor vehicles, including the postman's van, requiring approaching trains to slow right down and sound a prolonged warning whistle. Some extraordinary place names are encountered in this part of the world. Although this is a through route, it's easy to see why vehicles are discouraged. You wouldn't want to meet someone coming the other way. At this point we have a junction. The track off to the left leads eventually to Erton Road Station. It's the reverse of my Walk for Grandma video. We'll take the way to the right. And more Cumbrian place names. Ignore the side paths. A glimpse of Mancaster Fell. It's not a dead-end road, but we've seen all too clearly why motorists are not wanted here. Now we find ourselves in the little village of Eskdale Green, and I visit the post office shop for some refreshments. Breakfast, after all, was at five o'clock this morning. St. Bega is the saint after whom the town of St. Bees, farther up the coast, is named. Public toilets and a defibrillator. A well-appointed village. And some more wonderful names. Continuing up a footpath which leads to Blee Tarn, which I visited last month. But we'll turn off down a path which takes us around the Outward Bound Centre at Gate House. I doubt that their clients would be very impressed by my little ramble. The track gets gradually rougher and wilder. Not challenging to any able-bodied individual, but definitely calling for stout footwear. And offering fine views of the fells leading ultimately to Scar Fell, England's highest mountain. Soon our path crosses another, and we turn right to head back towards our starting point.
A distant glimpse of the King George the Fourth pub. I won't be diverting there today, but have done in the past. The bridge over Lal Ratty. There aren't enough trains running today to make it worthwhile stopping to film. And so back to the road and the entrance to the green station. Where station master Sid flags down a raven glass bound train to pick up a waiting passenger. He'll do the same for me shortly so that I can board a train for Dalegarth. The train heads out over the crossing where our walk began. Riveresque gives a warning blast for that crossing. I finally arrive at Dalegarth, journey's end, and it's noticeable that after a couple of days when much of England has suffered torrential rainfall with serious flooding in places, Lakeland, normally one of the wettest areas in the United Kingdom, has enjoyed mild, dry weather. My boots aren't muddy at all. A quick word with driver Ryan, and then into the Felbites Cafe for a much needed coffee and cake.
other change you made. And that's all change, please. Thank you. Yeah, you need to, you need to have got a sequel because you might be knocked down the ten past four. Well, we've got. Oh, that's cool.
The promised sunny afternoon simply hasn't materialised, and the clouds are lowering over the mountains as we look up Eskdale. The 1510 for Ravenglass sits simmering in the station as the last passengers board for the 40-minute ride down to the coast. The driver returns from his break to perform final checks on his locomotive. The platform manager moves from coach to coach, checking tickets. and then proceeds to inform the driver of any passengers requiring to alight at intermediate stations. The guard joins them for final checks
The track to the right of the railway is now the service road to Dalegarth Cottages. It was the original trackbed of the three-foot gauge railway built to carry iron ore from the local mines down to Ravenglass for onward transportation by the Furness Railway. The railway crosses over the service road here at Beckfoot, so a warning whistle is required. Stanley House Hotel and Beckfoot Station. We now travel beneath Hollinghead Bank as we head towards Hollinghead Crag. High above is Blee Tarn, which featured in one of my recent walk videos. This whole area is dotted with old quarries and disused mine workings. To the left we catch a brief glimpse of the River Esk, the only time it can be seen along the journey and easily missed by passengers. As the train approaches Spout House Farm, there's simply too much high ground between myself and the drone. Contact is lost, and this is where the sheer magic of Chinese technology comes into play. After 11 seconds without contact, the drone turns and heads for its launch position. I've left the return footage in the video because a. It gives a fine view up Eskdale, and B. It shows how the craft returns and lands, without any input from me, precisely on the orange pad from which it was launched. 
Magic or what? From the ultimate in high technology, back to the steam age. This is the last train of the day, the 1610 to Ravenglass, so obviously I had to be on it. I joined Sid in the Ratty Arms for a couple of excellent pints. No food available, I'm afraid. At this time of the year, it starts to get dark early. Sunset over the Irish Sea added a certain magic to the early part of the journey. Find the gap between the train and the platform. 
And then we are firmly back in the 21st century with one of Cumbria's biggest employers, British Nuclear Fuels at Sellafield. Sellafield is the start of an 11-mile single-track section to Whitehaven, so the train driver must obtain a token from the signalman here to allow him to proceed. Tonight we were held up waiting for a late-running southbound service. Beyond here I slept for much of the journey to Carlisle, and it was 10.30pm before I reached home. Was it worth it? Of course it was. If you're still watching, thank you. And here's to the next time, whenever and wherever.